So they say leaders cling on to power. Well, not today. The Irish Prime Minister, known as the Taoiseach, Leo Varadkar, announced he is quitting politics. He resigned today and will leave office as soon as a replacement is announced. He said it's for personal and political reasons. He's a former doctor turned politician. He was the uh, first became Taoiseach in 17. Then he was deputy and then he shared power. Country's youngest leader and the first openly gay Irish Prime Minister. Here's what he said. I know this will come as a surprise to many people and a disappointment to some. And I hope at least you'll understand my decision. I know that others will, how shall I put it, cope with the news just fine. That is the great thing about living in a democracy. Suzanne Lynch is with me from Politico. Now, you, you, you've met him and you've worked with him, or you know him as much as any journalist ever does. Why is he gone? Well, this is the big question, and I can tell you everybody in Dublin is asking themselves, and a lot of people here in Brussels are asking themselves that. As you say, most politicians at the moment, we know a lot of them I could name, who don't want to go, you know, think now, now it's not the moment. And yet he did take people by surprise. Um, there are a couple of reasons that could be. Uh, polls uh, had suggested his party is not that popular. He is not that popular as a leader. Ireland is facing a general election within the year. So that is probably weighing on his decisions. And in the last few days and weeks, a number of members of his own party, Fianna Gael, have announced they're not running in the next general election. And I think that has put a bit of fear into his governing, governing Fianna Gael party. And uh, he decided that now was the time uh, to step down. It's the way in which he also said, um, I may not be the best person to, 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 be, to carry forward. And there was almost like a hern in New Zealand, this idea of the tank is empty. Yeah. Per I think personal and political reasons. Yes, and I mean, that, that comparison with the, the former New Zealand Prime Minister is very apt. They're both of similar generations. Uh, they were elected on a promise of change, of a new generation of leaders, and yet both of them are leaving office at a much younger stage. I mean, Leo Varadkar is only 45. He had said before that he thought he would be out of politics by the time he was 50, but he's not 50 yet. Um, but yes, he's hinted at that now. Like a lot of politicians, he's had a lot of social media abuse. There's a lot of discussion around Europe, around the world, about the abuse politicians are coming under. Uh, he didn't specifically mention that, um, but that is very much in the air. But I think that that prospect of a general election coming was also weighing on his mind. Who's 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 uh, the front runner? Well, uh, there are a lot of names in the hat, but significantly, just a couple of hours ago, Simon Coveney yes took himself out. Took himself out. So he was the uh, foreign minister, well known during the Brexit negotiations. He said he's not running. There's another Simon, Simon Harris, another very kind of ambitious, uh, very articulate, younger politician uh, who uh, has really said before he would be interested. Also, Pascal Donoghue is well known as the chairman of the Eurogroup right. here in Brussels, finance minister, former finance minister. He is a possibility. We haven't heard from them yet. Let's talk generally about this place behind. European elections taking place very soon, uh, June. We have a new commission or mandate, as they like to call it. Um, we had the fiasco of Charles Michel uh, wanting to run off and become an MEP, and now he's staying. Until, at least until his time. Um, what is the mood here? Well, look, this is like the end. It, the, the commission run for five years and we're in the final few months. So it's kind of race to the finish. So uh, Ursula von der Leyen, the woman who, who has her office up here behind us, very hard working, head of the European Commission, she has now thrown her hat in the ring for another five terms. She'll get it. She'll get it. I mean, she has to go through a lot of hoops. Uh, the Parliament yeah. have to... Put, yeah. But, but yeah, I, I, I would bet that, that she will get it. So... Um, but has her five years generally been regarded as a success? I think yes. I'm not saying she's beyond criticism, but she is, without a doubt, one of the most effective or powerful commission presidents in history. Now, you mightn't agree with everything she's done, but, for example, she has a very strong relationship with Joe Biden. She oversaw the EU's response to Ukraine back when France and Germany, Macron Schultz, were not really listening to the Americans' warnings right. about the imminent invasion by Russia. She was dealing with America. She stepped into that leadership role. Uh, one of her problems, though, is climate change. She's getting a lot of pushback from people now. Will she continue that kind of green deal that was part of her first term in the second? Is it can. true she sleeps in the building sometimes? It's true. It's true. A converted office, we believe. Yes. Really? Yeah, she's very, very, very hard She used to do when she was a defence minister in, 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 in Germany. And you think she's, she's uh, having a kip? Well, she, she could be there hard. now. She does, she does a lot of travelling as well, though, so she may well be away. Although we are yeah. on the eve of a European summit, uh, so she will be attending that. All the EU leaders, including Leo Varadkar, 
are his will be arriving one. here. His last one All right. uh, will be arriving here tomorrow morning. Very grateful to have you. As always, thank, thank you. you for coming and talking to us. Thank you. When we, we, uh, we, we're in Brussels. Very grateful. Thank you.